Hello, welcome back. Why is low latency important? Now imagine a situation where you are watching a T20 India-Pakistan cricket on an OTT platform and suddenly you hear an eruption of celebration outside on the outside world or one of your friends is calling or texting you the outcome of the match only because he was watching the match on a broadcast television which is like 2-3 to three minutes ahead of OTT platforms. So it just carelessly spoils the outcome for you. To address this problem, you need to match the latency provided by the broadcast television. In today's episode, we are going to address this problem. We will find out how to achieve broadcast grade low latency on your OTT platform, ensuring that your viewers don't have to face this untimely celebration or spoilers. Also, as usual, we will have an technical hands-on demo where we will achieve astonishing 4 to 5 seconds class to class latency. So let's deliver a truly seamless and real-time sporting experience to your viewers across the globe. Let's begin. In this video, we will explore the concept of LLHLS its benefits and how it works. I am still your host Girish Nair and this is CMAF where I simplify cloud for media and future technologies. Let's dive right in. When you watch a live stream, there is a slight delay between what's happening in the real life and what you see on the screen. This delay is like a small time gap. Low latency streaming tries to make this time gap as tiny as possible so you can experience the action in real time without much delay. Low latency streaming requires special technology and efficient methods to reduce this delay. This will make your live streaming experience more immediate and real time and also allow you to add some interactivity to the streaming. Low latency is crucial for multiple use cases like real-time interaction. Low latency allow real-time interaction between the content creator and the audience. For example, in a live gaming streams, the streamer can respond to comments, questions and reactions from the viewers almost instant, instantly. This creates a more engaging and interactive experience. Collaboration could be another use case. In some cases, live streaming involves multiple people participating together, such as large conferences or collaborative projects. Low latency enables smoother communication and coordination among creators. Also, low latency help you achieve reduced frustration and enhance user experience. Like the example that we discussed in the beginning, it will ensure that the viewers are not having frustration that's coming from the spoilers because of the increased latency. The definition of low latency varies from person to person and encoder to encoder. So I'm using this image from Streaming Media Magazine which explains latency in 8 different ranges of which 18 to 45 seconds is a typical range that we normally see when you're doing encoding into HLS and Dash. Anything beyond 45 seconds is considered as high latency. If you want to reduce the latency below 18 seconds which is called as reduced latency range you have to do some kind of fine tuning on the encoder. 5 seconds in the center is a tipping point which is normally seen as a latency of the broadcast or the satellite streaming. If you want your viewers to watch the content along with the broadcast you have to achieve 5 seconds or call something called as low latency. So 5 seconds and less than 5 is considered as low latency. Now. Anything less than 1 second is ultra loaded in your real time. To achieve that, you may have to use technologies like WebRTC. Now, let's take a closer look at how low latency HLS works. LLHLS achieve low latency through a combination of techniques on backend, encoder, CDN as well as the player. To enable low latency, LLHLS follows these techniques. 1. Generation of partial segments. Media segments in a normal HLS are typically 6 seconds long, whereas 
partial segments in LLHLS can be as short as 200 milliseconds. So for example, to generate a regular length 6 second media segment, LLHLS will publish 30 partial segments. 2. Playlist Delta Updates Client transfer playlist more frequently with low latency HLS. They can request and servers can provide playlist and delta updates, which reduces the startup time and latency. 3. Blocking of playlist reload. When, when a client issues an HTTP GET request to a media playlist update, it can add special query parameter called delivery directives to specify that it wants the playlist response to include a future segment. 4. Using preload hints. Server use a new tag extx preload hint to inform the client about an upcoming partial segment and media initialization section. So let's see how to implement LLHLS. Implementing LLHLS requires support from both the streaming server and the client player. Streaming servers need to support the LLHLS protocol and the client players must be capable of handling the real-time delivery of media segments. So without any delay, let's jump into the demo. Let's open the console and navigate to AWS Media Live. Step 1 is to create an input. Let me create an RTMP push input where I am going to push the stream from my OBS studio. Rest of the settings can be default. Change the security group as you required. I am keeping it open. Add your application name and instance and create the input. Next step is to create a media package. So let me navigate to media package console. You have to select live v2 because the v1 version of media package don't have an LLHLS option. So let's click on live v2 and create channel group. Click on create channel group button. Add your group name and description and click on create. After creating channel group, click on create channel button to create your channel. Add your channel name. You can leave the policy as is and just click on create. After creating a channel, let's create a low latency HLS endpoint. Give, give a name for your HLS endpoint and choose container type. It could be TS or CMAF. When I tested, I was able to achieve a latency of 5 to 8 seconds with TS, whereas 4 to 5 second latency with CMAF. So let's choose CMAF. Then go ahead and, and change the segment settings. You can change the segment duration. You can choose one or two seconds. I'm choosing two seconds. So I'm not being too aggressive. I'm attaching a public policy because I want this endpoint to be accessed over internet. Then we have to create the manifest. Let's choose low latency HLS manifest. Add your manifest name like in text. Manifest window will provide you with the DVR functionality. So go ahead and change as per your requirement. This is not going to affect the latency. Once endpoint is created, click on manifest settings and inside manifest setting, you can see the playback URL. This will be used for testing our playback. Let's navigate to the media live console to create the live channel. I won't be creating a channel from scratch. Instead, I will be cloning an existing channel. You can clone any existing channel or go back in our episodes and create a new channel for your live stream. Add your input, low latency in RTMP input. And in the output groups, if you see, we already have a media package output, which we had in the earlier episode, but we can't use media package for low latency stream. Let's remove it. RTMP was added by default. By mistake, I think I will just remove that as well. Now we need to add a fresh uh, output group. So let's use HLS output group, which will help you to achieve low latency HLS. For the interest URL, you have to navigate to media package. Look out for your channel, which is a low latency channel that we created. Go to the settings. In the settings, you will have ingest endpoint. Copy the endpoint and then you can paste it in the URL. Next important thing is the CDN setting. Go to CDN setting and choose HLS basic put. Media package supports only basic HLS put. And your media live should have a role which has access to media package. Next configuration to achieve low latency is in manifest and segment. So 
go scroll down to manifestant segments go to the segment lengths change the segment length to one second now we need to create all output groups so i'm a bit lazy for that so let me go to the general settings and select a template channel template so i'm using an http live streaming template so you can see all the output groups have been created go ahead and click on create channel to create the channel okay there's a validation error because we this output group has one web vtt output group which we are not using right we don't have any subtitles so let's remove it and now go and create the channel so your low latency channel is created and we are good to go while my channel is getting created and then once channel get created you have to run the channel ensure that those things are already done i'm just jumping on to the obs configuration so here i'm going to configure my obs to capture a browser window which has the clock and send it to my media live input i assume you guys are already familiar with obs but still let me run through the steps of adding a browser window with a clock in maybe 2x speed so just watch or if you if you want to skip you can skip and go ahead once you complete the clock setup done you can click on transition for your clock settings to properly reflect and click on start streaming to start the streaming to media live i am using the oven player to test the low latency streaming i will put the url in the description along with all the configuration that i used to build that player so that it will be easy for you to test your stream you can just replace the url with your media package uh, endpoint url and then you can uh, play the content and see if you are able to see the clock test the low latency stream you have to just replace the playback url with your url from the media package so copy your media package output paste it in your playback url and click on add source and your source will be added to the video player now i'm going to compare the obs out the program scene and my clock and see what exactly am i getting i'll just i know it's difficult to calculate the latency when the playback is happening so let me freeze the stream and you can see the latency is 5 point something seconds to achieve 4 seconds i had to do some gops manipulation uh, if interested just let me know in comments and i will share the share my media live json for your reference hope today's episode gave you a fair idea of how to achieve low latency broadcast rate low latency on http streaming try it out and let me know your feedback But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.